Hello everyone, David here, and we've got a slight problem with our heat pump. As soon as it fires up, you'll know what it is. So this particular unit is 15 years old, and I've already changed the motor once already, and I was just too cheap to change the squirrel cage previously. It was just like permanently dirty or something, it was just kind of nasty looking, I didn't like it, but I was also too cheap. But I ordered a new motor and a new squirrel cage because, as you will see in a minute, it's making a lot of noise. And it's not horrific, uh, but it definitely needs to be replaced. So in order to get the panel off, you're going to need a 5 16 something or other. I just use this nut driver. Okay, so here we are, and we're not really going to be able to see anything uh, when it starts up. Well, I have it off now. I'm through the breakers. Uh, but when it starts up, you'll hear a noise. And the only thing I can make it do is make a little noise when I mess with the uh, fan blade here. Let me zoom in and stick my hand in there. So spinning it does nothing. Super quiet. Um, I can move the cage and don't know if the camera can pick that up. So what I have is movement back and forth this way. It's not really flopping around. It's just back and forth like this. However, when it's running, it makes a heck of a racket. And then, I can't remember if this one has bearings or bushings in it. Probably bushings. And I know I oil it from time to time. Let me see if I can zoom in. I'll move the wires out of the way. So, right here you can see the uh, oil cap thingy. And, as I recall, I'll know when I take it all apart. You can see it's not pushed down all the way, but I usually put a drop of oil in there every spring or whatever. And I believe that the oil goes down and uh, moistens up some cotton or some other type of whisk material and lubricates the bearing. And again, I think it's a bushing, not a bearing. So anyway, so the parts are on order. The squirrel cage will be here tomorrow and the motor will probably be here in three or four days. You can expedite these orders and get them in here overnight, but yeah, it's really not that bad. It's also springtime, so you know it's kind of time of year when you don't need to really run the heat pump. So I also have plenty of uh, capacitors. I may or may not put a new one in, don't know yet. I have, looks like, two outside ones and two inside ones. So I'll look and see. I think one of them's new and one of them's used. You know, I just kind of switched it out as preventative maintenance. So we'll see. Uh, See some like dents in there or something. I may or may not change that out. Okay, here we go with the noisy running. And you'll know it's noisy when you hear the silent running with the new motor. I'm sure the video can't pick it up, but it's definitely vibrating. Also, I really can't see the shaft spinning. There's a flat spot on it. Uh, it, it may be jumping around a little bit. Uh, it's really difficult to see. If I can zoom in. I mean, you can definitely see it shaking because I have my hand on it. But the flat spot on there makes it look like it's worse than it is. 
definitely a lot of noise. Okay, motor's here. Let's see what we have to do in order to prep it here. If I can get the box open, a little beat up, not a problem. All right, the absolute main thing for me is the voltage. So here we have 208. That's what I need. Uh, the horsepower, I'm going to be using a half. We're going to be going in the middle. And the amps don't really care. 3.8, I think that's on the other one too. Shaft is uh, one half by six. That's normal. Uh, so uh, let's open it up. All right, let's get it out of the box. Yep, just what I suspected. So, um... On our current motor, the white line is yellow, and then the uh, blue line, so while I have my yellow tape here, I'm going to mark it as yellow so that it matches the original schematic. Also on these motors, uh, do not leave these on here. Well, I guess you can, but uh, take those off. That's normal practice. If you're a technician in the field, that's what you would do. All right, next I'm going to remove the caps, put a few drops of oil in there. Just, uh, you know, I normally do that every spring. Uh, here's some paperwork. You know, it has words in it. You know, you probably should look it over, especially if it's in the language that you normally uh, read. All right, there's really nothing in here except the first two bullet points. You know, it says uh, check the nameplate, general, general construction. Inspect for damage, you know, so normal stuff. All right, got my oil in there. We'll cap it back off. And don't forget, this one is going to be hidden. I mean, you, you really aren't going to get to it in the future unless you disassemble it. You can be able to get to this one, but oh well. All right, the brown wires that go to the capacitor are already terminated so don't have to mess with those. All right, the ground is already set so we just need to put the terminals on the wires that we need that we're actually going to use. And I believe these are your clockwise counterclockwise so if it's spinning in the wrong direction you just unplug these and switch them around and you'll go from counterclockwise to clockwise so as I recall I didn't have to mess with it and I'll check it before I use it all right first thing we're gonna do is slip my terminal cover on then I doubled the wire over because it's going to go on there like this then I'll clamp it down in place okay I've got my blue and white terminals on and covered, shielded, ready to go. All of the other wires, which is the black and red, uh, I don't need those. Those are the other speeds that I'm not going to be using. So I'm going to terminate them. like that get them out of the way okay so here's the wiring brown to capacitor uh, the white is common which I'm gonna put some yellow tape on there to make it yellow to match the schematic in the um, in the air handling unit black is high blue is medium which we're gonna use Red is low, we're not going to use it, so black and red are tied up. I'm going to attach them right here, you'll see that. So, I used a wire tie to clamp it together, clamp the wires together, and then I used another wire tie, stuck it in one of these vent holes here, and just zipped it up, and that's going to hold it up out of the way. So, Alright, I'm going to put a little zippity doo -dah on these uh, rotation direction wires here. And just uh, zip them up. And I'll be out of the way. Alright, that's my yellow wire. So my capacitor wires seem especially long, especially when compared to the ground wire. But if I need to 
double it up, you know, shorten it up like that. I'll just wire tie it or something. Okay, I'm done for now waiting on the squirrel cage since I'm going to replace it and not just clean the old one. So here we are, all bundled together. These are separate because they go in different directions. You'll see when I installed it or probably in the previous scene when I was showing the noise. But if you don't remember, the capacitor was on the side and this goes up through the panel to the control boards. This actually goes to the common on the transformer. Okay, the squirrel cage has arrived and we're going to open it up, take a look at it. Now, they sell these as both clockwise and counterclockwise. They say just to flip it around. But, uh, technically, I think um, I can put it in exactly like the one is in there now. Same orientation, I mean. And uh, it'll be in the correct direction. Warning! And oh yeah, sharp edges. They aren't kidding about that. Wow. Alright. And here it is. So when I pull the other one out, I will make sure that the uh, blades are oriented in the same manner. So what they're saying is if uh, you know you need to go counterclockwise just to put it in backwards but I don't know how you tighten this down let's see what the label says uh, 19th February 22 and it says clockwise CV so I'll have to make sure I'm doing this correct as I was saying counterclockwise I know it goes like this. So, all right, we'll see what happens. All right, let's get this old fan out. First thing I'm going to do is disconnect the capacitor and remove the ground screw and pop that out. Then I'll disconnect my yellow line and my blue line. Then I have uh, four screws here holding the fan housing unit and we'll slide it out. All right, breakers off. All right, motor wires off. I'll take the common off. I'll take the blue, which is the middle speed wire, off. Note where it goes if you don't know where it goes. If you're just trusting this schematic. Oh, I have a temperature wire there. I need to move that out of the way. All right, we'll get these guys off. Pull the blower housing. Oh, we need a little extension there. All right, four of these. The trick is don't drop them. That out of the way. That should free this up. And out it comes. All right, seven sixteenths right here, five sixteenths right here. I think I'm gonna take the I need gloves to put this thing back together.
fun stuff. All right, checking new fan. Old fan looks good. The veins are going in the correct direction, or everything is oriented the same. So, and you can see I have a little bit of a gap right here. Let's see if I can get over. That's not really the exit. The intake is over here. So with the intake, see if I can get the camera in there. See how the intake kind of uh, overlaps here. The air is going into the side here. It's curved. And then you can see my fingers coming through there. So that's why that fan is, is close to the edge there. Okay, I put my gloves on. This is not sharp edge protection. Obviously, this is just dirt protection. So I'll just, because uh, I'm sure the motor is going to be dirty. I'll just take these three screws out, and then the fun really begins. Oh crap, I forgot to undo the nut for the uh, fan. Hang on. So the fan and the motor come out separately. Uh, the fan is going to stay in there and you pull the motor out. Uh, so you have to undo this nut right here. It's square which, which means you need either a 12 point socket, maybe some uh, wrenches or something like that. So I'll just use a combination wrench here. Or should I say adjustable wrench? <laughs> so I'll just... turns till it's loose and get it by hand which is good enough okay we're back on top to the motor got the uh, three bolts out now we can pull the motor out hopefully kind of messed up the flat spot there so let me deal with that all right, I hate to admit this, but I'm struggling with the motor a little bit, so let me get the mounting bracket off, and then I'll deal with the motor. All right, well, I apologize if it seems like I'm rushing, but I'm, you know, trying to get this job in a time job finished in a timely manner so that we can have our heat pump back uh, before we uh, go to bed tonight. Okay, let's get this back in. Let's see. This is the motor side because I wrote my dimensions on here. Right, let me rewrite that there. So that's my wrench size, 7 16 and 5 16 or... All right, let's get ready for reassembly. Be careful. These edges are sharp. I don't have my gloves on. I'm just going to set it in place and I'm gonna close it up and uh, get it ready for the motor to be reassembled in there all right with the squirrel cage in there oriented correctly the lock stud bolt whatever is on the other side there turn this up Get it ready for the motor. Now we'll put the mounting bracket on the motor. All right, we're gonna triple check our wiring. And you will see that it says purple to purple and yellow to yellow is clockwise shaft. And that's what we have as clockwise. I know in the beginning of the video I kept saying counterclockwise. Who knows? That's why you don't go by memory. Go by looking. So let's get this bracket on there and the uh, legs all right let's get the bracket on there and fun stuff all right i could undo the bolt but i didn't so i just i just ran it through the wires and then now i'm just going to kind of snap it in place here notice i'm going over the uh 
oil holes so that I don't catch those. And we'll get this guy on here correctly as soon as I get that lip over there. If I have to loosen it up some more, I will. All right, next you want to notice there's a little indentation right here. So that's going to slide in there and fit right in there like that. So we'll do that and uh, tighten down the bracket. All right, so I have the bracket mounted and it's tight. And notice I have one leg near the wires and I have it on this side right here. You'll see why in a minute. And I can put these out of the way. I've already checked to make sure they're oriented correctly. Now we're ready to mount the motor. Oops. If I can let the wires grab the tripod. And I remove the stud, the locking stud that goes on the flat spot of the shaft so that it can just slide right in there. Get that oriented. Let it slide right in. Now you can see why I kicked the tripod, why I oriented the wires like I did. Because the brown that goes to the capacitor is right here and the ground is right here and then these guys are going up into the control so they'll be going this way so that's why I oriented the wires to come out right here by one of the legs these are called torque limiting nuts or is there's a sleeve on here and what that does is no matter how tight you go what will happen is the threads will go in and engage and then it'll go metal to metal because the end here will contact the housing unit and you just won't be able to tighten it any tighter because it's metal to metal. So it's called a torque limiter. All right, and we'll just snug these down. So we feel it go metal to metal. Uh, then one final thing is to lock the shaft down onto the squirrel cage. Uh, there's the flat, there's the nut. I just have it finger tight. Uh, it's not uh, tightened down all the way because there's one more check. So we'll turn our unit around and we'll check over here on the intake side. Make sure it's a little bit overlapped on the intake side. We don't care about this side over here because this is your exhaust. So there's really no intake over here, but we want to make sure we're free. Want to make sure we're going counterclockwise and we can feel a breeze. Uh, clockwise, I'm sorry. Well, I've been saying counterclockwise throughout the whole video, but it doesn't matter. Yours could be counterclockwise. Just make sure you get the correct one. Oh, I need to lock it down. All right, one final check before install, and that is the clockwise rotation is an exhaust, and you should be able to feel it coming out of here, even at this slow speed. You should be able to feel it coming out. Also, it should be quiet. No noise. No rubbing. None of that. All right, we're back to install. Uh, slide in and four screws. All right, there are some slits, slats. <laughs> anyway, the edge of the fan housing slides in there. You don't have to engage them right at the very beginning. They're about halfway down. And once you get them engaged, it just slides right in. Then we'll put our bracket back on, four screws, two mount to this plate, two mount to the housing. All right, get all four screws in place. You can put a paper towel between the screw and the nut driver to hold it in place. That kind of helps. If you drop it, be sure you have a magnet. All right, wires. All 
right, we have our ground. That'll reach where the ground normally goes. We have plenty of brown wires. Our blue and yellow, or in this case, blue and white, will go up here. I don't know if I'm off camera. Let's see. How about that? A little grommet there. So that'll go up there. Um, this guy has a dent in it, so I'll use a new one. Just uh, grab a new one. Let's see what we got here. A nice uh, capacitor. Uh, 10 microfarads for my case. So, want to make sure your voltage is correct too. And we'll put that in. Uh, since this guy was still working, I'm going to keep him as a spare. Uh, I'll know it's not the, I'll know it's not a new one because of the dent. But if I need it as a spare, I know it works. Okay, it doesn't matter whether the uh, brown or brown with white tracer goes which way or that way, it doesn't matter. All right, in my case, it just kind of slides in this groove here. And we will run our screw through the ground wire. And then clamp the mounting bracket. Get a thread started there. And then zippity doo da. We're in there. All right, I like to make sure my wires are up out of the way, not pinched. I can wire tie them off if I want to. Make sure the ground wire is not crimped on anything. Sometimes when you tighten it up, it'll twist it and you can pinch it. So you want to make sure that's not happening. Now we'll connect our power wires. All right, our original schematic showed the yellow wire going to the transformer common. I put a little yellow tape on there to match the uh, original uh, schematic. Then the blue wire, which is the mid-speed for this particular motor, goes right here on the Q connector, which you marked if you don't remember it. All right, and then one last thing before I put the uh, panel on is I'll turn everything on and I will make sure that I feel suction here, that it is drawing air on this side right here. Well, it's going to be blowing up into the air handling unit, so I won't know that, but I mean, you know, I could go upstairs and feel a vent or something, but as long as it's drawing here, I know it's exhausting there. So that's, that's the main thing. So let me uh, fire this thing up. All right, in case you didn't know, they don't come on right away. I mean, even if there's a demand, it's going to take a little while for everything to uh, check. And then you'll hear this thermostat click, and then the fan motor may or may not come on. So, just kind of wait. I'm going to kill the recording and then just turn it on when the fan's going and show you that it's running correctly. All right, it passed the smoke test. So here it is, drawing it in on my left in this case. And I checked the vent, make sure it's blowing out of the vent, not sucking into through the vent. So there we have it. Fan motor and squirrel cage, squirrel cage change out. Put this guy back. And we are back in business. Thank you for watching.